Hello guys, I hope that you are doing just fine. Today we're going to learn a lot of new things. We are going to study the present perfect tense, okay? You know that we have the simple present, we have the present continuous, we have the simple past, which is something about actions that finished, and we have the present perfect tense, okay? So, there's many things that we need to check about this, some specific vocabulary, some specific expressions that we need to understand in order to manage this topic, okay? So, we are going to focus today talking about movies, okay? We have here two different movies that are very famous, yes, but what do they have in common? What are they, the, the, what is the element that they have in common? The movies. The fantasy. Absolutely, they are fantasy movies, yes that there are in the past that they are in the past absolutely and also we have to think they that the, they the, yes in the infinitive in the infinitive past in the absolutely non definito no uh -huh. yes 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 from the grammatical sense yes but we can also say that in common, these two movies have this element. They are adaptations from books, okay? They originally are books and they were adapted into movies. Now, let's see some questions about these movies specifically. For example, Tiziana, have you watched or have you seen the Lord of the Rings movies? No, I haven't. You haven't. Okay, very good. So Tiziana hasn't, hasn't watched the movie of the Lord of the Rings. Yes. What about you, Martia? Have you watched the Lord of the Rings movies? No, oh, I... I have not. I haven't. No. Very good, very good. Okay, so yes, you say, no, I haven't watched these movies. And you, Laura? I have seen uh, The Lord of Ring when my son was a uh, children. Okay, when your son was a child. Absolutely. Child. All right. Very good, thank you. Okay, and Laura, from these uh, Lord of the Rings movies, how many movies have you watched? Uh, I don't uh, understood the story. Yes, 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 yes. You said that you watch these films with your son, yes? Yes. See. And um, how many movies from The Lord of the Rings? One, two, three movies? Three. The three movies, all right? Mm, but so, I, I don't remember. <laughs> ah, no, 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 yes. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I am not going to ask questions specifically about the movies. Don't worry. I saw the, this film very boring. Okay, yes, <laughs> you think that they are boring. Okay, yes, we could, they are long, all right? Mm. Good, so we can say that Laura has watched three films from The Lord of the Rings, okay? And uh, Laura, have you read any of the books from The Lord of the Rings? No, I haven't. Okay, very good, no, you haven't. What about you, Tiziana? Have you read one of these books? Uh, not, I haven't. Very good. So, Tiziana hasn't read any of the books from The Lord of the Rings. And you, Martia? Uh, 
um, no, I don't have, um, I have it, I haven't uh, read the books of the Lord of the Rings movie. Very good, excellent, uh, excellent. No. excellent, excellent. Yes, mm -hmm. you haven't read any of these books. Perfect, all right. So this could be um, a similar situation with the books of Alice in Wonderland. Do you see that we are managing the formula with half? Well, it's because half here is an auxiliary. Okay, here in this type of uh, sentence, the verb half is an auxiliary, but is not the main verb of the sentence. Okay, so we're going to see. Um, uh, how this present perfect time works, okay? Mm -hmm. So we can say here in a positive form, yes, I have seen the film, yes. This is an affirmative quest, an affirmative sentence of the present perfect, okay? How do you think we can do the formula for this sentence, guys? What do you think is the formula? for the present perfect? Uh, um, the subject, the senior have, uh, mm -hmm. seen is the present uh, perfect. Mm -hmm. The past participle. Ah, uh -huh, yes, the past the participle. participle. And uh, the film uh, is the compliment. Is a compliment. Thank you very much, Titiana. That is basically the formula that we have for making these sentences. So you always have to have a subject and then you have uh, to use an auxiliary, which is half, all right? In this case, this is present, this is a, a present perfect time. So sometimes it will be half, sometimes it will be has, but we will see that in a moment. Then you have a verb in a special time, which is the past participle, and then you have a complement, okay? Remember that you can use the formal, yes, I'm going to do it here with my pointer. We can have a formal way of saying that, and we can have an informal way, yes? Remember that when we are having conversational English, or informal English, we use contractions, okay? So we can say here, I have seen the film, or I've seen the film, okay? Here we have a negative one, okay? Now, Laura, what do you think is the formula for a negative sentence in present perfect? Uh, subject, uh, auxiliary have, uh, not, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, verb, party, past participle of the, ver the main verb. And, uh, and then uh, the complement. And then the complement. Very simple, right? Mm -hmm. So you just, just have to add a not. Not. All right? So here we can say, I have not seen the film, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what could be, how would you read this form? Can you please read it, Marcia? How would you, how would you read this sentence? Uh, I read, I haven't seen the film. I haven't. Very good, excellent. Yes, so that will be the short form of the sentence for conversational and informal English. Guys, remember, when you have something to write, when you're going to write an email, unless it's for your friend or your family, but if you're going to write, to write an email or you're going to write a letter or a recommendation or you're going to do a presentation, let's say an academic or business presentation, it is ideal that you use these normal forms, okay? Not the short forms. Okay. 
-hmm. And finally, we have here an interrogative form. What do you think is the interrogative form for this sentence? Please, Marcia. What is the formula for the questions? Uh, the auxiliary appears. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the subject. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, past uh, the past participle and um, the fifth okay, mm -hmm. it, it is the complement. Absolutely. All right. So again, if you're going to make this in an interrogative form, you just have to put at the beginning the auxiliary half, okay, or has, which we're going to see in some minutes. And then you just write the subject. Again, you write the verb in a past participle form. And finally, you see the complement. Okay, that is, is very, very simple to do this type of sentences. But we're going to see why do we use this, okay? We are going to see in which situations we have to use this time because in, uh, in some languages, it may be similar to the past form, but it is not, all right? And we are going to see why, all right? Oh, but before that, we're going to see how we can do that in third person. We're going to focus on some questions first. Tiziana, has Laura watched the Lord of the Rings movies? Uh, yes, uh, she, she has. Very good, yes, she has, all right. And um, Marcia, how many movies has Laura watched from the Lord of the Rings? Uh, she has watched uh, three movies. She has watched three movies, very good, so you see, when you are using the present perfect form for he, she, or it, you have to change the auxiliary from have to has, okay? Why? Because this is in present and we need to work on the conjugations for each subject, all right? So that's basically what you have to do with the third person. You just have to change the auxiliary to has, okay? Remember he, she, or it, and the rest is with have, okay? Mm -hmm. Very good, excellent. You can also practice at home while you're watching this video. You can pause it and um, practice the answers for each one of these questions, okay? Good. So, yes, uh, here we have something a little bit different. All right, you can use the subject with the form of the verb have. Yes, she has seen the film. And if you're going to do it in a short form, make sure that you do not get confused between has or a different verb, okay? So here I have the sentence, she has seen, she has seen the film. What is this form? Can you please read this sentence, Laura? Has, uh, has uh, she seen uh, this film? Oh, no, no, yes, but can you please read the sentence? Uh -huh. Just read it. She's, uh, she's uh, seen the film. Very good. She's seen the film. Maybe for you, it sounds like she is, but it's not, okay? This is not the verb to be. Remember that this is the verb have. I, ha I, I have a question. Yes, um, Marcia, tell me. Uh, how I know uh, that uh, um, here, uh, uh, my daughter, uh, he, uh, there uh, is um, is has and 
and not is, uh, is. Pues, ¿Cómo sé sí. yo que es has y no es is? Absolutely, absolutely, fair que sí. It's very simple. It is because of this verb. Yes. So if you have this verb with present perfect, then this is has, right? Okay. So it is different when you have these two sentences. Sí, sí. Example. Yes, sí, sí. Like for example. She's seen the films. Yes, we have a, a past participle form there. So when you have a past participle form, it is naturally that this is belongs to have. Okay? Okay, okay. okay. All right? Okay. Or for example, let's do another example with some transformations. For example, you can say, She's been a teacher for 20 years, for example, right? Okay. And we have another sentence, as we'll be read. She's a teacher. All right? So I ask you, Marcia, in this first one, what is this? Has. Is this has, has or is has. it the verb to be? Has, has been a uh, zero. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, okay. all right. Okay. And in here we have the verb to be because I don't have any teacher. verb. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. Exactly. We don't have any verb with past participle forms. Okay. 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 Very good, excellent. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right. And it is the same application of the formula with the third person. You just have to make the addition of the not, okay? And if you're going to say the short form, you just have to put the apostrophe here. Do not forget. So I have the normal form. Tiziana, can you please read this form? She has not seen the film. Very good, absolutely. And what is the short form? Marcia? Excuse me. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> she hasn't seen uh, the film. She hasn't. She, she hasn't. She hasn't. All right. So do not forget the apostrophe goes between the N and the T. Okay. And basically, we do the question in the same way. Can you please read the question, uh, Laura? Had she seen the film? Very good. So it's exactly the same thing. And let's see the different uses of the present perfect. You can use the present perfect to talk about the past, but we don't say when. We don't say yesterday. We don't say two months ago because that would be simple past. And we are going to see that in the second part of this time, okay, in the second lesson. So we are in the past, but we don't say when. Right? So, for example, you say, I have seen the film. She has finished his studies, but I don't see, I don't mention any specific moment, any specific day, any specific hour. No. All right? Never. Never. Another use for this present perfect is when we talk about unfinished actions. So, for example, we started something in the past but it is possible that I do it again, right? So the action has not finished, all right? For example, they have studied German for three months. So they started German in this moment. They are doing it now, and maybe in the future, they are going to continue studying German. So I use it also in this particular situation. Or you can also say, she has practiced judo since 2010. Or they have been to France two times in their lives. So it means that they were in the past and it is probable, it is likely that they are going to be in France again. All right. That's when you also use the present perfect tense. 
there are some particular words that you use with the present perfect. And the, those words are ever or never. Okay, so we use ever, particularly in questions, okay? And it denotes, it means that it is something that you have made any time in your life. Yes, for example, have you ever been to Norway? Have you ever eaten this food, etc.? So it's to say that to ask about an action that maybe you have done in your life. And the word never, it has a negative connotation, actually. And it refers to something that has, something that you have never done. So, some action that that is not done, all right? So it has a negative sense, okay? It has a negative sense. And then never, we use it uh, not in questions, okay? We use it in positive sentences. But listen to me, we, list, we put them in positive sentences, but it has a negative connotation, okay? Mm -hmm. So for example, it says here, we have never traveled to Japan, right? A synonym for this could be, we haven't traveled to Japan, yes? But if you want to be more specific, you can, you can say, we have never traveled to Japan. Yes, so it has a negative connotation, right? And the word ever, have you ever eaten sushi? Have you ever watched this movie? Have you ever um, written this, etc.? okay? And we also have the word just, okay? Some people use it, uh, especially they use it in British English, okay? Does not uh, get scared about this. And this one is used to talk about something that recently happened. And when we say recently happened, we are talking about maximum 15, 20 minutes, okay? Something that has just finished, you can also use the present perfect form, okay? So for example, I have just finished my meal. Yes, like I finished five minutes ago, but you can also use the present perfect tense. You can say, I have just finished my meal, which she has just called me. Yes, it was like two minutes ago. So you can also use the present perfect tense in here. She has just called me, okay? So these are, these are words, okay? that you have to make sure you use if you want to be much more specific about what you want to express, okay? So remember, never, it has a negative connotation that you have not done this, and you use it only in positive sentences, okay? Ever is generally used in questions, is to ask about an action that maybe you have done and just is for something, is an action that has just finished, okay? But just remember, as we saw in the first case, we don't use a specific time for the present perfect tense, okay? All right, so uh, just a reminder of the formula for the present perfect, okay? You can use uh, the verb have as an auxiliary. Remember that it changes in the third person. You can also use it in contractions. Remember, don't get confused between has or is, okay? And you have to use the past participle form of the main verb, okay? So in this case, I am using the past participle of the verb C, which is seen. Careful, it's not the simple past, it's the past participle, okay? And in the negative form, I just add the not, okay? And you can also use a contraction with the apostrophe just in the middle of N and T in case you are going to write it, okay? And I am very emphatic in this because many students make this mistake. They put the 
the apostrophe in the wrong place, all right? Good, now let's just study some past participle forms, okay? Um, remember, guys, that the past participle, when you have the general table that we always see on the internet, the table that our teachers give us, generally the past participle form goes in this third column, okay? Do not forget, this is a no-no, all right? This is the normal form and the past participle is the one that we use for the present perfect. Don't forget. There are some basic verbs, very basic. Okay, we're going to see some of them, some of some important verbs that we need to know the past participle form. We have this verb here, learn. What do you think is the past participle, Laura, of learn? Uh, learn. Absolutely. All right learned with, with T. Mm. This verb is, uh, sometimes you can also use it with ED, it's a verb that it can be regular or irregular. So some people use it with ED, some people use it only with T. But yes, the past participle is learned. Mm. We have another basic verb, this one, right. What is the past participle, Tiziana? Written. Very good. Remember the pronunciation, written, okay? Written, you, you kind of make an mm, 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 okay? And you're going to say it, so it's written, okay? Very good, Tiziana. And we have this verb, Marcia, speak. What is a past participle? Speak. Spoken. Ah, spoken. Spoken, yes. Spoken, all right? But that's a good guess. Now that you say that, it is good, guys, that sometimes you do not know. If you're not sure about the past participle, then you can just guess. And if you're next to your teacher or next to a native speaker, they will correct it for you. So it's not wrong to guess. Let's see all the three verbs. We have this verb, the, the verb to be. What is the past participle form? Laura, please. Uh, been. Absolutely, been, all right? This one doesn't change with the person. It never changes, okay? It's always the same. Okay, so that, that's something that you have to remember. We only change uh, the auxiliar have or has, but we don't change the verb, okay? The past participle is always part participle, the same form for all the subjects, okay? This one, drive. What is the past participle of drive, Tiziana? Uh, driven. Absolutely, driven, all right? And eat. What is the past participle, Marcia? Eaten. Eaten. Very good. So, guys, there are many more verbs. A lot, actually, there are more than 150 verbs that are irregular, okay, and many more that are regular. So I advise you to uh, study every day new verbs so you can increase your vocabulary and can use these tense in different situations, okay. But just uh, for a closing, let's practice, all right, let's practice this type of, of of sentence. So for example, we have uh, this part here, he learned Spanish, okay? If we have this negative form, okay? We can say, we haven't learned Spanish, which one would be the formal way of saying this sentence, Laura? You just have to change this part, remember? Uh, we have not learned. Uh -huh. We have not learned Spanish, okay? Let's make it a surprise, a surprise uh, element. Just then give me one moment. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, not this one. This one we have already worked on that. Mm -hmm. So you can practice more at home. There you go. Perfect. Let's share it again to make it a little bit more challenging. So here we have this first form, okay? We haven't learned Spanish or a synonym could be, can you please read the second sentence, Tiziana? A synonym? Uh, yeah, yes, just read this sentence, please. We have never learned Spanish. Very good. So it is a synonym, okay? It is not negative, okay. but it has a negative meaning, a negative connotation, a negative interpretation. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to say we haven't never, no, it's not possible, okay? It's like in mathematics. When you have negative and negative, you have positive, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, we have this uh, exercise here. What do you think could be the interrogative form, Marcia? Um, I have to say in the interrogative form. Yes. Okay. Um, one moment. Uh, no problem. Have we uh, written, we, uh, have we written uh, a poem? Absolutely. Just remember the pronunciation, written, okay? Written. written. Uh-huh, very good. Oh, I, I put, I put she, but yes, it's, it's have we written a poems, okay? If we manage this with the third person, okay, we can say, has she written eight poems? And you can add the word ever to be more specific. If she has ever done it in her life, has she ever written eight poems? Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Same here, we can say, uh, have you eaten sushi? Have you ever mm -hmm. eaten sushi? And here we're going to write, we're going to see a positive form. Can you please read, can you please tell me what could be the positive form of this sentence, Tiziana? Uh, I, I have uh, uh, driven at uh, 2030 uh, kilometers. 200, uh, 230 kilometers mm -hmm. uh, per hour. hour. Per hour, very good, yes. Uh, I have driven at 230 kilometers per hour. Remember that when you say a, a number with the hundreds, it is crucial that you say and, okay? So it's 230, 102, 640, etc. And you can also be very specific about the intensity, yes, the frequency of this action. So you can say, I have always driven at 230 kilometers per hour. Okay? All right, guys. So I hope that you can find this uh, lesson useful. Remember to continue practicing the different forms of the present perfect. In our next session, we will see what is the difference between the use of the present perfect and the simple past, okay? Which are, there are many differences between them, okay? So uh, have a nice day. Thank okay. you. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. Bye, Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Okay. Thank <laughs>